All right, so we're going to do a um, tutorial about this homework I gave out for our last exam. It's going to cover uh, heat calorimetry problems, and it's also going to cover gases. Um, the other topic that's on your test is going to be uh, chapter 18.2, counting atoms in a unit cell for simple cubic, face centered cubic, and body center cubic. Um, you can't see me on this because I left my writing tablet at work and I am at home, so we're going to just do this the old-fashioned way. I hope it works out okay. I will also post the PDF with all the answers written out on it as well, in case that is easier for you to see. Okay, so let's jump in. All right, so my usual strategy here is to read through the problem and find variables in their units. And once I know what the unit is, I know what, var what variable to give it. So 145 grams is a mass. And it temperature starts at 20.0 because it says from, and it's going to end at 60.0. So delta T is always final minus initial. Um, that didn't caption right. Delta T is final minus initial. There we go. And so I'm going to plug that in. We're going to say the final is 60.0. The initial is 20.0. So we'll have a temperature change of 40 degrees. Um, it's water. So I also remember that the heat capacity of water is a constant. I give you this on the test and it's also on your final exam as well. So all we have to do is find the Q of our water by plugging everything in. So 145 times the heat capacity of water times our temperature change. Notice this is a positive number because the temperature went up. Okay, so the, that means my heat will be a positive number as well. I don't need to flip the sign there because we are only talking about a temperature change of water. There's not a reaction in contact with it. All right, so my, my calculator says 24,267.2. I noticed that the only unit that doesn't cancel is joules. Now I want to go look at my sig figs. My measurement has three here and three here. So then I'll round it to three, just like that. You could also write 2.4 times 10 to the four if you wanted to. Um, our next question. Is going to be, oh, we're looking for specific heat. So specific heat is C. I'm going to be finding that. If Q is 950, I don't know why I wrote the five first, but I did. And it raises the temperature of a 20 gram sample. So that's mass from 18 to 42. So again, my delta T is final minus initial. So 42.0 minus 18.0. So we got a change of 24.0 degrees Celsius. Your calculator will say 24, but you know better because when we do sig figs for subtraction, it's about the place value. Um, so this time I know the Q. Um, I know the mass is 20. I don't know the specific heat, and I do know the temperature. So I'm going to multiply these together, um, and then I'll divide 950 by that answer. So all together, our, our, our problem here looks like 950 divided by 20 times 24. So you can see why heat capacity has such weird units, like joules, grams, Celsius. Um, all right, so the answer I get is 1.979166. I noticed three sig figs from the temperature, so 1.979 is going to round 
going to round to 1.98 if I have only three sig figs. So that'll be the answer there. Mercury has a specific heat. Okay, so again, that's the C of 0.139 joules per gram degree C. How much heat is required to raise the temperature of a sample? So that's the mass from 16.1 to 32.5. Again, I'm going to do 32.5 minus 16.1. Notice that I don't need to convert to Kelvin for thermodynamics. It isn't required because I don't have the ideal gas constant here. Whereas in all of our gas problems, we will always convert to, to Kelvin. All right, and so we're trying to find the heat this time. We're gonna plug everything in. So the mass is 12.80. Our heat capacity is 0.139. This is not involving water, so I don't use the 4.8. 4.184. Okay. Um, again, we're going to have three sig figs this time. Okay. So the calculator says 29.17888. The only unit that doesn't cancel is joules there. Um, so three sig figs puts us at 29.2 joules. That's not very much. That's not very much. Um, and a pretty big temperature change because mercury does not absorb heat uh, particularly well. All right, the specific heat, this variable is S. You could change it to C. It doesn't matter. Remember, they're the same. Of three different substances um, are listed below. Now it's at the top of this page. Um, and so we have different heat capacities here. They found that 1.47 kilojoules of heat, so that's our Q. I am going to convert that to joules because I can see that our heat capacities are in joules. Okay, good old dimensional analysis there. I have a mass of 19.70 grams. And the temperature change is by 36.4 degrees. So there's no subtraction to do there. It's already uh, a delta. Okay. And so there's a couple ways to solve this. You could um, plug in various Cs with the mass and the temperature change and see which one is going to match the heat capacity. I So that might mean I'd have to do like up to three calculations. I'm going to do the one that requires um, fewer numbers of calculations to figure out the answer. So you could do it the other way. It's okay if you did. You should get the same conclusion that I will. Um, so my heat capacity is going to be the, the heat in joules divided by the mass and also divided by 36.4 degrees Celsius. All right, my calculator says 2.04998. I have four sig figs there, but three there. So I'm going to go 2.05 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. So the units really help you out with these problems because if you write them for everything, you'll know if you have done the calculation correctly when your unit matches. Um, so that means, yeah, if I had plugged in the heat capacity for each one and then seen if it matched, I probably would have done acetic acid last. So I prefer to solve this way, but you do you. It's okay. Oh, product placement for ginger ale. I'll move that out of the way. Um, so anyway, that, that's our answer. It's acetic acid. Number eight. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. What volume in centimeter cubed of, okay, I'm gonna translate the density to be a normal fraction, which is gonna help me out because I might need to use it as a conversion factor. And it says, what volume of gold can absorb 2.30 kilojoules of heat? Again, I'm gonna convert that into joules because I know that's what the constants are supposed to be. And so that'll be 2,003, I think, 100. Okay. Um, oops. The temperature change 
is five degrees and the heat capacity is 0.128. So a little bit of less work with figuring out which variables are which. If I had this question on a test, I would definitely use this to help remind myself of what the units of heat capacity are supposed to be and even what you know temperature could be and Q. So just a pro tip, use the test to help you. <laughs> anyway, so I know that 2,300 joules and it's asking us for volume, but that's not directly in the equation. So I'm gonna have to find the mass and then use that density to get to the volume. We get the heat capacity and we get a temperature change. So my mass is gonna be 2,300 divided by 0.128 and then divide that by five. So the mass is quite big. It's 3,593.75 grams. I'm not rounding anything just yet because I know I have to take that and the density and use them together. I really encourage you to break your perspective that density is some sort of equation. Um, if you think of it as a conversion factor between volume and mass, you can use dimensional analysis and that's that's the way that I have used it more than any other. So it's not really a formula, it's a relationship. And so I figured out by canceling grams, right? I'm gonna divide this by 19.3, that 186.204, but I only get three sig figs. Yeah, that had three, so that zero is significant. So that many milliliters, which again is the same thing as centimeters cubed, that's how much gold it is. Gold is quite dense. So 